Ballad of Launcelot and Elaine by Edgar Lee Masters. It was a hermit on Whit Sunday that came to the table round. King Arthur, wit ye by what night may the Holy Grail be found? By never a knight that liveth now, by none that feasteth here. King Arthur marvelled when he said he shall be got this year. Then approached brave Sir Launcelot, and there did mount his steed, and hastened to a pleasant town, that stood in knightly need. Where many people him acclaimed, he passed the Corbin Pound, and there he saw a fairer tower, than ever was his wont. And in that tower, for many years a dolorous lady lay, whom Queen Northglees had bewitched, and also Queen Lefay. And Launcelot loosed her from those pains, and there a dragon slew. Then came King Pels out, and said your name, brave knight and true. My name is Pels, wit ye well, and king of the far country. And I, Sir Knight, am cousin nigh, to Joseph of Armathy. I am Sir Launcelot du Lake. And then they clung them fast, and yede into the castle hall, to take the king's repast. Anon there cometh in a dove, by the windows open fold, and in her mouth was a rich censer, that shone like a for gold. And Therithel was such savour, as bloweth over sea, from a land of many coloured flowers, and trees of spicery. And Therithel was meat, and drink, and a damsel passing fair, betwixt her hands of tulip white, a golden cup did bear. Oh, Jesu said Sir Launcelot, what may this marvel mean? That is, said Pell's richest thing, that any man hath seen. Oh, Jesu said Sir Launcelot, what may this sight avail? Now wit ye, well said King Pell's, that was the Holy Grail. Then by this sign King Pell's, knew Elaine his fair daughter, should lie with Launcelot that night, and Launcelot with her. And that this twain should get a child, before the night should fail, who would be named Sir Galahad, and find the Holy Grail. Then cometh, one height Dame Brison with Pell's, to confer now, wit ye well, Sir Launcelot loveth, but I never. But if ye, keep him well in hand, the while I work my charms, the maid Elaine, ere spring of morn, shall lie within his arms. Dame Brison was the subtlest witch, that was that time in life. She was as if Beelzebub had taken her to wife. Then did she cause one known of face, to Launcelot to bring, as if it came from Gynever, her wanted signet ring. By holy rood, thou comest true, for well I know thy face. Where is my lady? asked the knight, there in the castle case. Tis five leagues scarcely from this hall, up spoke that man of guile. I go this hour, said Launcelot, though it were fifty mile. Then sped Dame Brisson to the king and whispered, and we thrive, Elaine must reach the castle case, ere Launcelot arrive. Elaine stole forth with twenty knights and a goodly company. Sir Launcelot rode fast behind, Queen Guy never to see. Anon he reached the castle door. Oh, fond and well deceived. And there it seemed the queen's own train Sir Launcelot received. Where is the queen? Quoth Launcelot, for I am sore bested, have not such haste, said Dame Brisson, the queen is now in bed. Then lead me thither, saith he, and cease, this jape of thine. Now sit thee down, said Dame Brisson, and have a cup of wine. For wit ye, not that many eyes upon you here have stared. Now have a cup of wine, until all things may be prepared. Elaine lay in a fair chamber, twixt linen sweet and clean. Dame Brisson all the windows stopped, that no day might be seen. Dame Brisson fetched a cup of wine, and Launcelot drank thereof. No more of flagons, saith he, for I am mad for love. Dame Brisson took Sir Launcelot, where lay the maid Elaine. Sir Launcelot entered the bedchamber, the queen's love for to gain. Sir Launcelot kissed the maid Elaine, and her cheeks, and brows did burn. And then they lay in others' arms until the morn's undern. Anon Sir Launcelot rose and toward the window groped, and then he saw the maid Elaine, when he the window oped. A traitorous saith Launcelot, and then he got his sword, that I should live so long, and now become a knight aboard. False traitorous saith Launcelot, and then he shook the steel. 
Elaine skipped naked from the bed and floor. The knight did kneel. I am King Pell's own daughter, and thou art Launcelot, the greatest knight of all the world. This hour we have begged. O traitorous Brisson, cried the knight, O charmed cup of wine, that I this treasonous thing should do for treasures such as thine. Have mercy, saith maid Elaine, thy child is in my womb. Therite the morning's silvern light flooded the bridal room. That light it was a benison. It seemed a holy boon, as one behind a rack of cloud shineth the summer moon. And in the eyes of Maid Elaine looked forth so sweet a faith, Sir Launcelot took his glittering sword and thrust it in the sheath. So God me help, I spare thy life, but I am wretch, and thrall, if any let my sword to make Dame Brison's head to fall. So have thy will, of her she said, but do to me, but good. For thou hast had my fairest flower, which is my maidenhood. And we have done the will of God, and the will of God is best. Sir Launcelot lifted the maid Elaine, and hid her on his breast. Anon there cometh in a dove, by the window's open fold, and in her mouth was a rich censer, that shone like beaten gold. And Therithel was such savour, as bloweth over sea, from a land of many coloured flowers, and trees of spicery. And Therithel was meat, and drink, and a damsel passing fair, betwixt her hands of silver white a golden cup, did bear. O oh, Jesu, said Sir Launcelot, what may this marvel mean? That is, she said, the richest thing, that any man hath seen. O oh, Jesu, said Sir Launcelot, what may this sight avail? Now wit ye, well said Maid Elaine, this is the Holy Grail. And then a nimbus light hung o'er her brow, so fair and meek, and turned to orient pearls the tears that clustered down her cheek, and a sound of music passing sweet went in and out again. Sir Launcelot made the sign of the cross, and knelt to Maid Elaine. Name him, whatever name thou wilt, but be his sword, and may all thrice tempered gainst a wayward world that lost the Holy Grail. Sir Launcelot sadly took his leave, and rode against the morn. And when the time was fully come Sir Galahad was born. Also he was from Jesu Christ, our Lord, the eighth degree. Likewise the greatest knight this world may ever hope to see.